Howdy, this is Bubba. I'm going to do a video about what went wrong on my last cruise on the Carnival Glory. I did one of these on the way home. Really, the audio wasn't the best in the world, so I may go back and re-record that just myself. But this is what went wrong on the... the and I, honestly, there's a lot to say on this. I did not pick out every minor little thing, but I tried to stick these more into bigger, more noteworthy things. Um... Also, I will not be talking about anything related to the ship. I'm going to do a separate video on um, what I think about the ship. So, uh, you know, this is always a tricky subject because I don't want to, you know, rant, rave, and complain like a lot of people do for no reason, but I also don't want to say everything was amazing when it wasn't. So I try to be, you know, some constructive criticism somewhere in the middle. So, um, also, I want to start out with saying... I think the people I talked to, the biggest disappointment was Half Moon K. Half Moon K was canceled. Was I think deep down I knew that. I was afraid of it. I even went on the Facebook um, group and tried to warn people that it was probably happening, um, even though it was going to be sunny or sort of sunny. It was the wind against it being a tender boat. So that was a huge bummer. Um, I've only been to Half Moon K one time, and I, I don't know if I would book the cruise if it wasn't. I'm still glad I did, but um, that was a major bummer for me, and I know a lot of people I talked to. Uh, not else, not, not much else to say on that one because, you know, it was canceled. But you know, that's just sometimes that's the breaks you get. So in the future, if you are going to Half Moon K, just be aware there's a high possibility that it gets canceled. Um, this next one's tricky. I'm going to try and use my words carefully here. Uh, I know there are some high profile people in Carmel that will at least occasionally watch my videos. And that is the cruise director, Kim Chavis, I think is his last name. Um, frankly, he was terrible. Um, not the worst Carmel cruise director I've had in recent years, but he'd be in the conversation. Um, there was simply nothing he did at even a below average level. Um, I'm one of those people I do believe a cruise director can improve a cruise, and I believe he can also make a cruise worse. And this was one of those times that he made the cruise worse, in my opinion. Um, you know, when it came out the first day on my Debbie Wog videos, you'll see, I said, you know, he's better than I thought because I'd heard some bad things. Um, but then I ended up saying, I just have this feeling he's going to get worse as the week goes on. And the reason I said that was because on the opening party he had, the the opening welcome aboard show, I, I can tell when somebody tells the same jokes, the same lines of every ship, and that's what he did the whole first day, and he was active that first day, but then after that, he, you know, like I said, without, I don't try to trash him, but he just did nothing at even a below average level. He didn't have a personality, he wasn't around the ship, he wasn't funny. And he also didn't have as much going on on the ship, which we'll get into that later. But I think the thing that when I, it was the day that we was in free, one of the days there was the mega deck party was going on out. And we had canceled a port. We just canceled a port. So we knew weather was, bad weather was coming. It was like 1030 when the deck party was. And I, I got there right at 1030. And it was pouring down rain. And he didn't even bother to, he didn't even know that it was raining on the deck party until the deck party was about to get started. Because I, I heard a passenger say, it's raining. We still have this party. He's like, it's raining? And, you know, that's when I was like, we were in the bad rest of the week. Um, and they did move the deck party over to the nightclub, but it, you pretty much just end there, and, and people didn't know we had canceled, and it was just, you know, that was just an example of, you know, and he really just has no business being a, um, a cruise director, especially at a decent size ship. There's fun staff people that can do a better job than him, um, but uh, moving on, the weather was a factor, obviously, kind of like I said with Hackman K, not anybody's fault, just bad luck um but i said that did affect the deck parties not only the one i just mentioned that got moved inside but also the celery party the celery party is always one of the highlights even if you don't care about the cupid shuffle just being outside and 
kicking out the um, in it kicking off the the week is a good thing, and um, and um, so another thing back to the cruise director is that he just had no depth to him, like in the, the platinum party when you're supposed to thank everybody for coming back and you know being the loyal carnival people who kind of make the the the, the repeat customers to make everything. He just said, "Are y'all having a good cruise?" And this didn't wasn't sincere, which where I was in that kind of stuff. And that was small side note, but anyway, moving on. Um, the um, yeah, there's really only one deck party all week because of the weather, and that was the age party, which was awesome. Um, the uh, fun staff, a couple of things. One, the fun staff wasn't very fun, and again, I think that. Water runs downhill would be my suggestion on that one. Um, the only good fun staff member there was 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 Chris, who was the young Colombian girl, um, and she ended up getting sick, which we'll touch on that in a little bit. So that left the, they there also wasn't very many fun staff people. There was only a year or so they had to call the DJ in to cover some of the. Um, to cover some of the fun staff things. You saw him doing karaoke and different things like that, but so this wasn't enough. And um, the uh, two people got, well, actually several people got, two signature people got COVID. Chris, the young Colombian fun staff girl, who I said, like I said, was the only fun one they had, and she got sick, and uh, she ended up coming back the very last day, like as in the day was getting off the ship, like the couple hours we was on the ship. Uh, and I talked to her a little bit then. Uh, she will be on the magic next, if anybody is wondering. Um, and then the second one, I don't know her name, but the lock band going on, there was a pretty female singer that was good and entertained. She got sick and just never heard back from her after about day three or so. Um, and that was actually a pretty big deal because. Um, we like that was kind of the in between thing that everybody would kind of do, and they had to scramble around and find different playlist performers and musicians and people. They had to try to fill her spot, but that group really went downhill after she got sick, and so that was you know at her. Um, the uh, this is something that's been a constant problem. We got lucky in my last one celebration, it was, and that was the servers not being friendly in the. Anytime dining. Now, you could argue and probably even correctly argue that that could be because they are understaffed and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, it doesn't take long to introduce yourself. Hey, I'm so and so. I'll be taking care of you. And that this was not. We got a couple. There was a guy from um, Africa that was uh, friendly in it. Uh, but, um, you know, for, for the most part, it was straight to business. Didn't say hi, kiss my tail, nothing. And that is typically that's not the case if you, if you do traditional, but it is if you do any time. Uh, the uh, country duo playing at the casino, I um, made hardcore country music. I'm very hard to please with this. And they were not good at all. Uh, yeah, I, I know he may have been from Arkansas, but he was not, did not need to, he was not a country music singer. Didn't need to be doing that. Um, and the um, another pretty big thing was that the wait time when you check in for the main dining room was always off. Um, you know, it would say the first night it said under 10 minutes, so we quickly got up there and it took 40 minutes. Sometimes it would say two hours and take 30 minutes. Sometimes it would say 60 minutes and take 50. So it, 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 it was like playing Russian roulette trying to figure out how long the wait to dinner actually was. Um, and the little server girl, I talked to her, and that was one of my complaints was that, you know, that you need to know whatever the wait time is, just need to know. And also, it was, it did take long to eat in the main dining room. Um, and you know, I'm kind of tying that in with the short staff was that the, you saw empty tables and you saw people waiting. So my guess would be that would be because you're short staffed. Um, but, um, Yeah, I mean, it just took a while. It took a while to get seated because there's only one other specialty restaurant. There's only one specialty restaurant on this thing, so most people didn't eat in the dining room. Which did the buffet. Um, 
the entertainment after 10. Some nights this was good, but they was about three nights where after 10 o'clock, they was literally nothing other than like maybe one music thing and like the piano bar and stuff like that. But there was like, they needed some more stuff after 10 o'clock. Like there was a couple of nights where that, there was literally nothing to do after like 10 o'clock, including the second to last date. I think it was, um, you know, cause the only thing to do was the comedy and it was so crowded in that that you, you literally couldn't find a seat that would turn you away because they just was nothing else to do. And that typically wasn't the case, but sometimes after 10 o'clock, when people aren't ready to go to bed, there needs to be more stuff to do. I think that also ties in with either the cruise director or the entertainment director, one of the two. Um, the brunch wait, the brunch, it took a long time to eat brunch. But, you know, you can get checked in on the app pretty easily because you you know, in the morning you're not necessarily rushed, but... I mean, it would t take about an hour or so to get to eat. And sometimes, and even myself, that last day just didn't, really just didn't want to spend an hour to eat breakfast when I could take 10 minutes and be done. And also the service in there was bad. There was one night, it was one day, the last time we did it, where we didn't get a single refill the entire, the entire breakfast. And, you know, when it takes a while to get your food, you're out of, you're out of drink before you even get to your meal and you have nothing to drink when you're actually doing it. So those are some things I don't mean to rat and rave or complain, but you know those are some things I think you know need to be pointed out that were negative. I still had a good time, of course. Wish I was back next week, but um, yeah, those are some things. If you're on the ship, let me know what you thought, or just in, or even just on your a, a separate cruise. Like and subscribe.